What is your favorite book? That's a good question. I love so many books. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Beauty and the Beast, The Jungle Book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mmm, chocolate. But if I had to pick, I'd say The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. It's got everything. Fish, dolphins, mermaids, and an oh-so-handsome prince. Uh, hello, Miss Booksy! Right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, storytime. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah, Victor? <laughs> that was hilarious. So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet, but don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> this is kind of spooky. Oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped. Ripped, chopped, glued, fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life. It's alive! Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's... It's... it's alive! <laughs> what? No! That can't be! Uh. Yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Uh. Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? 
That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a but, a big one. A real live monster was on the loose. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. <gasps> That's so sad. Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left, but then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Wow, that is so mean. Ah. ah, monster, run! I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Mm. Okay, great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Aw, that's so sweet. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. First, we practiced language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together. And then we shake. Uh, 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 okay, you're doing really great, but can you put me down? <laughs> that was so funny. <sighs> Good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> We spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman, I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. 
city officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're gonna get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah. yeah! Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Mama. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue. Uh. Eh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. <laughs> then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Wow, this is so fun. Ah! I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh, uh. Hey, keep it down in there. Oh no, run! Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Uh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. Okay. Good night. That was a close one. Phew, that was close. <sighs> we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not gonna wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. That is amazing. So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some of their projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. What do we have here? Oh no, this doesn't look good. Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? 
I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I uh, said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. <laughs> Whoa. This place is crazy. Oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Meow. Uh. Come on, Gran, time for bed. Uh. Yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow. Your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. Ah, watch out. The gang was all riled up and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha, ah, I'll get you. Ah. But he missed. Phew. <laughs> but then it landed. Ah, hey, you stuck me. And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos. Finally. We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Arr! Ah, that's better. Phew. Thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> Aw, that's so sweet. Yeah, okay, we'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know, just one more stop. Come on, guys, let's go to Professor Weirdly's. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep, awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> That's amazing. He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Oh, I just love happy endings. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. <laughs> We're reading the Emperor's New Clothes. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was an emperor. An emperor is basically the same as a king or a queen. A ruler, a head honcho, big kahuna, bad mamma jamma, the boss lady, you get the point. Anyway, this emperor's name was Matilda. Matilda was, how do I say, a bit much. What can I say? I like the finer things in life. Emperor Matilda spent a lot of her time thinking about stuff. Jewels, clothes, money. Sometimes she would open her palace to the public so that people could come in and admire all her things. Wow! Looky that! In case you were wondering, yes, it's real gold. Do you like that? Yes, your highness. Would you like to have it? Oh, yes, your highness, I would very much like that. Cool, just checking. All right, let's move it along. There's a long line here today. That is so not cool. 
Yes, Emperor Matilda was a little out of touch with the people. All her life, everyone around her had just said, Yes, Your Highness, of course, Your Highness, but a pretty dress, Your Highness. No one deserves it more than you, Your Highness. You are the most wonderful person in the whole wide world in the history of humankind, Your Highness. And wow, we could anyone be more perfect than you, Your Highness? I don't think so. No siree, Bob. No way, Jose. No contest. You can make them on the best, the best. Yeah, it was all a bit much. The emperor was surrounded by people who only dared to say what they thought she wanted to hear. So it was kind of like she was living in a bubble, like she was all by herself in her own world. So yeah, technically she pays us to hang out with her. And we have to call her your highness, but we like her. Yeah, she's only scary sometimes. Not scary like a shark or a big ogre. Ugh, where's my ice cream? Scary like that. Did you get Emperor Matilda her ice cream? I thought you were getting it. Excuse me. Hello. <gasps> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream for ice cream. Minnie, where's my ice cream? Wow, that is so mean. Sorry, your highness. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I don't want to stay here if she's hangry. Be a dear and go get my ice cream. Yes, Your Highness, two scoops coming up. Two? Three, three scoops coming up. <laughs> it's melted. What? That's not possible. Yeah, look right there. <sighs> I'm not even that hungry anyway. Let's talk about my coronation. You might be wondering, what's a coronation? Well, a coronation is a royal ceremony where a queen or emperor gets her official I'm in charge crown. Matilda's father was old and it was time for her to take over. It was a pretty big deal. I don't get it. Don't you already have like a zillion crowns? Yes, but this makes it official. I'll finally be the supreme number one ruler of the empire. <gasps> and it's an excuse for a big party. <gasps> Speaking of, how's the party planning going? It's gonna be fabulous! Give me the deets. We're going to have acrobats, a ferris wheel, fireworks, ice sculptures, a taco truck, chocolate waterfall, a special performance by Shen Yun dancers, the works! Wow, that is so cool! And what about the guest list? Everyone's gonna be there! I don't want everyone to be there! This needs to be exclusive! Right, right, well not everyone, but all the VIPs! Yep, all the princes and princesses, kings and queens, the movers and the shakers, the beautiful people, the glitterati, etc. Okay, sounds good. Now, the most important question, what am I going to wear? I was thinking your pink dress with the ruffles and beads? No. What about your other pink dress with ruffles and beads, but also has those diamond buttons? Hmm, nuh -uh. Purple one with puffy sleeves and hoop skirt? Nah. Your blue gown with rainbow glitter and rhinestones? Eh, yeah, I don't think so. Your red, white, and blue pantsuit? No. Nope. Yellow dress with fairy wings and little sparkly spangly bits hanging off of it? No, 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 no. I need a new outfit. Shall I book a carriage to the mall? Uh, I am not going to wear something off the rack for my coronation for Friday. Ooh, how about we invite the world's leading fashion designers to the palace, and then we pick the one with the best design? Yes, and then I will pick which one has the best design. <laughs> Great idea. Glad I thought of it. Yes, wonderful idea, your highness. This is going to be so much fun. Bring on the fashion. This is going to be the best outfit ever. The best clothes anyone has ever seen. And so it was decided the world's best fashion designers would descend on the palace to vie for a chance to make the emperor's new clothes. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The emperor needed the perfect new outfit for her coronation, so Friday and Jeeves called on the world's top fashion designers. They came from all over for a chance to make Emperor Matilda's coronation duds. One by one, they tried to convince the emperor to give them a chance. Presenting Nutella vs. Blotchy. Hello, I am Nutella vs. Blotchy, but you already knew that, didn't you, darlings? Yes, well, she literally just said your names. Oh, okay. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes! 
this year is going to be all about... Yeah? Wait for it... I'm waiting! Tiny hats! <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny! Next! And now, meet Calvin Clown! Your Highness, I had a vision last night. I know exactly what you need to wear to your coronation! Ooh, tell me! Clown chic! <laughs> Next! And here's Diane von Furstenberg. Hello! Let me show you my designs made with exclusively the finest fox fur. <laughs> Next! One by one, wacky designers came in to sell their ideas to Emperor Matilda. She was waiting to be wowed, dazzled, blown away. But so far, she was not impressed. Oh, how hard is it to find someone who can make the most amazingly perfect and fabulous outfit the likes of which no one has ever seen? You know. Is she mad at us? I think she's mad at us. Do you think she's mad at us? Oh, I hope she's not mad at us. Uh, this is hopeless. Um, I think there might be one more designer out there. Zora, let's go check. Whoa, this place is crazy. Hi, um, do you want to be a fashion designer by any chance? What? A fashion designer. Ugh, never mind. Did somebody say fashion designer? We're not done. There's still hope. We've got... Wait, what are your names? I'm Z. Does that stand for something? It stands for everything and nothing. Okay. And your name? Dieter. Okay, your highness. May I present Z and Dieter? Hi. What's up? Um, people usually bow when they meet the emperor. Oh, do they? My bad. It's okay, Jeeves. They're cool, hip, artsy types. They're aloof. I can dig it. I'm cool. That's good to hear because our idea for your new look is very, very cool. I want something no one has ever seen before. Exactly. So, can I see a sketch or something? One moment. Do you trust us? I just met you. We can't show you our idea unless we know you trust our artistic vision. Okay. If not, we'll go design an outfit for Princess Megan. She gets us. What would you do if you were there? Uh, no way. Uh, what do you need from me? One million gold coins. Yeesh, that's a lot. You guys must be good. Let me think for a sec. Okay, I'm in. Excellent. Dieter, unveil the design. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The fashion designers Z and Dieter were just about to unveil their design for Emperor Matilda's coronation outfit. Can I get Z drumroll, please? Yeah, we're really good at that. Come on already, show me, show me, show me, show me. What do you think? Um, I don't get it. It's just a piece of paper that says, yes, girl. Because that's what everyone is going to say when they see you. Yes, yes girl. girl. But I want to see the outfit. You have to see the real thing. No drawing would do it justice. Let us get to work and we promise it will be worth the wait. Pinky promise? Sure. One, two, three, pinky promise. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Emperor Matilda gave the fashion designers their own suite in the palace so they could get to work. Now kids, let's take a trip to another part of the world where someone else was also getting ready for a big coronation party. Meet Prince Gerald. Prince Gerald was, well, remember when we said Emperor Matilda was a bit much? Well, if she's a bit much, then Prince Gerald was a lot. Ew, you don't expect me to wear these rags to the coronation party, do you? Your Highness, this is a suit made of the finest silk in the world. Well, it smells like worm spit. Okay, how 
know about this velvet cape? A cape? Do I look like a superhero, Chauncey? No, definitely not, sir. I mean, I know I'm big and strong and could probably scale a wall like Spider-Man, but come on. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. Okay, Mr. Know-It-All. Your brother is going to wear a simple suit of linen. He'll be quite comfortable. Would you like the tailors to make two? Ew, and look like we're twins? I am not twinning with Joshua. You don't want to twin with me, Gerald? Why not? Because you're my lowly younger brother who will never be king and is therefore a nothing person. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Ouch. All right. And I'll never catch Emperor Matilda's eye if I'm dressed like you. It's the goal of His Highness Prince General to woo Matilda and marry her. Thereby forming a mighty global dominion, the likes of which have never been seen. Oh. Well, it's nice to have goals. Chauncey, get Joshy out of here. He's killing my vibe. I'll show myself out. So yeah, Prince Gerald was planning on marrying Emperor Matilda. Of course, he was not the only person vying for a chance to wed the powerful Matilda. There was Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town, Count Von Winklevoss of Dumberton, Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas Shire, and of course, one can't forget Baron Von Earl Duke, Sir of London Townville Place City. Everyone wanted the prestige and power that would come with marrying Emperor Matilda, and the coronation ball would give them all a chance to win her heart. Emperor Matilda knew all eyes would be on her. Ooh, this is so exciting! She tried to imagine the perfect coronation outfit. What would Z and Dieter create? She could not wait to see. <gasps> Something with sparkle? Maybe a dress completely covered with diamonds? Would you like to dance? Sure! <sighs> Sorry, I can't move this dress, it's too heavy. It's real diamond. <laughs> nah, too heavy. Hmm. Oh, what about an outfit with stilts so I could look like an elegant giraffe? Okay, no, that's no good. Ooh, I know. What could be better than a dress made of butterflies? Like actual real life butterflies. No one's ever done that. Whoa, 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 help! My dress is flying away! Meanwhile, Z and Dieter were hard at work in their palace suite. Or at least that's how it sounded. But on the other side of the door, not so much. Hmm, what were they up to? Weren't they supposed to be hard at work? Chapter four, here we go. Day after day, Emperor Matilda waited to see the big reveal of Z and Dieter's design of her extra special coronation outfit. Is it ready yet? No, not yet. I don't know. Not quite yet. Oh. Now? No. <laughs> yeah, but how about now? No. No. Emperor Matilda was growing more and more impatient. Why don't you just give them a deadline and say if it's not done by then, they're out, fired, scrammed. Yeah, you're the emperor. They have to do what you say. Yeah, I am the emperor. Jeeves, Go tell them my coronation outfit had better be ready by Thursday, or else. Or else what? I don't know. Just make sure you sound scary and intimidating when you say it. Yes, ma'am. Or else. Or else. Or else. Wow, that is so mean. Ahem. Emperor Matilda has decreed. Um, that means decided. Um, yes. Yeah. You have to have the outfit ready by Thursday. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. Or else. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, back to business. Hello, fight. It seemed like Z and Dieter were just goofing off and wasting time. And then, all of a sudden, it was Thursday. Emperor Matilda woke up very, very, very excited. <sighs> Today is the day that I see the most fabulous, most beautiful, most perfect outfit in the world. Z and Dieter, on the other hand, woke up like this. Oh no, Z, wake up. It is Thursday. Shh, I'm sleeping. You must wake up. Today is the day the Emperor Matilda is coming to Caesar's design. <gasps> Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. <gasps> no, we're not ready! Yes, today! Get up! Zinc! Uh... Zinc! Zinc! I am thinking, you think! Ah! Hello! 
epic hide. Wait, close your eyes. Oh, I bet I'm in for a big surprise here. Where is it? Ooh, is this it? It feels weird. No, that's not it. Here. Ooh, I can't wait to try it on. This? You want me to wear this to the coronation? But this just looks like big frilly underoos. No, you wear that under the dress, obviously. Okay, so where's the real dress? You had a deadline, guys. Remember, or else. We know, and we used every available moment to work on this most perfect outfit. Great, so show me. Right, show you. Uh, Dieta, she wants us to show her. Here, this is it. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? But wait, before you say anything, let me explain to you how special this ensemble is. This, this is a magical dress. This dress can only be seen by people who deserve to see it. You know how everyone is always trying to impress you and be all buddy-buddy with you? Yeah, I'm the emperor. I'm basically the most important person in the world. Exactly, and you can't waste your time with Riff Raff. Anyone who can't see the dress is obviously not worth your time. Only the best people are able to see it. So tell us, what do you think? Do you love it? Well, obviously I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> that was so funny. I can't wait to see what happens next. Chapter five, here we go. Emperor Matilda tried on her new dress. Well? I love it! But deep down, she was super confused. Why couldn't she see it? So tell me again who can and cannot see my fabulous, gorgeous magic dress. It's simple. Anyone who doesn't deserve to see it won't see it. But what do you mean deserve? Can you give me some examples of who would not deserve to see it? Basically, anyone who is not worth your time. Enemies, frenemies, villains, ne'er-do-wells. Rapscallions, ragamuffins, Joe Schmoes, the boring, the uncool, the not awesome, etc. What about a romantic suitor who woos me and asks for my hand in marriage? If the person truly loves you, they will be able to see it. Uh, what about Princess Megan, who, like, says she's my friend, but she always does non-friend stuff? Like, she doesn't always share her snacks with me. False friends will not be able to see it. You'll finally be able to know who's fake and who's real in your life. Yeah, no haters allowed. Woo, that was a close one. Wow. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> who would not like me? Because I'm the best, you know? Of course you're the best, Emperor. No one here is questioning that. Can you two see the dress? Um, uh, yeah, of course. Doi, we love it. Have we not said we love it? Because we totally love it. And we can see it. Yep. Good. Well, I'm pretty exhausted from all this, so I think I'll take it up. Dismissed. Once Emperor Matilda was left alone, she took another look in the mirror. She looked up and down and all around. She put on glasses. She squinted. She tried using a magnifying glass. She took a selfie. Nothing worked. She could not see the dress. G what does this mean? Is something wrong with me? Am I uncool? Am I not as awesome as I think I am? Uh that is so not cool. Emperor Matilda decided she had better test this further. She went around the castle asking people what they thought of her outfit. She had to see if others could see what she herself could not. Excuse me, Mr. Butler, do you like my outfit? Um, yes, yes, of course, madam. Is it a pretty dress? Uh, most certainly, your highness. Okay. You, chef, what do you think of my new look? Why, it's very interesting. Well done, your highness. What do you like most about it? Gee, everything about it is beautiful. I really couldn't choose. <sighs> Gardener lady, halt. Yes, your highness. Do you like my dress? Your dress? Uh, yes, <laughs> my dress. You can see it, can't you? Um, yes. What would you do if you were there? Why do you say it like a question? Can you not see it? 
Is this a trick question? I think she's losing her marbles. Just tell her she looks pretty and move along. You look very pretty in your new dress, Highness. Ah! Everyone claimed they could see the dress. Emperor Matilda did not know what to think. Was it possible that everyone could see it except her? Meanwhile, Friday and Jeeves were also discussing the Emperor's new clothes. So, the dress? The dress. Can you see it? Can you? I asked you first. Let's answer at the same time. Count of three. One, two, three. I, I cannot, cannot see, the, see dress. the dress. Yikes. Yikes is right. Friday and Jeeves went looking for Z and Dieter to find out what was really going on. But the eccentric fashion designers were nowhere to be found. Where are they? Looks like they left in a hurry. How do you know? There's only one bite taken out of this donut. No one takes just one bite of donut. Good point. But why run away so hastily? They must have something to hide. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Friday and Jeeves were growing suspicious that the fashion designer Z and Dieter had pulled a trick on Emperor Matilda. Their so-called magic dress might be a big fat lie, and now it looked like they had run away. Very shady. Meanwhile, Emperor Matilda was so confused, but she knew one thing for certain. She couldn't let anyone else know that she could not see the dress. So it was business as usual, and the preparation for the coronation celebration were underway. Okay, the party is in less than 24 hours. Decorations are all set? Yes, your majesty. Ooh, is it too late to coordinate the streamers and balloons to match my dress? Uh, sure. Good idea, your highness. How are we going to do that? Rainbow everything? Ah, good plan. Hello, over here. What about the guest list? Has everyone RSVP? Yes, your majesty. Basically, the whole world will be here. It's gonna be a banger. And how about the DJ? I don't want a repeat of my last royal party. What is this? I cannot dance to this. <laughs> that was hilarious. We got DJ Razzle Dazzle. She's the best in the biz. Okay, good. What about the rest of my look? Your glamour consultants will be here any minute to talk hairstyle, makeup, shoes, and jewelry. Well, I guess I'd better get into my dress then. <laughs> right. Okay, see ya. We have to find Z and Dieter and get to the bottom of this. You kept the donut? It's valuable evidence. <laughs> Plus, it's strawberry frosted. Can't let a good donut go to waste. Now, where is that dress? Emperor Matilda realized she had a problem. If I can't see the dress, then how am I supposed to find it? Ugh. Oh, here, dressy, dressy, dressy. Here, dressy, where are you? It's no use. I'll never find it. Oh no! Excuse me, your highness. Ah, oh, you startled me. My apologies, highness. I'm your glamour guy, Gary. Nice to meet you. Now are you ready to get glam? Yes, of course. Okay, first things first. Where's that amazing dress I keep hearing about? Um, over there. Where? Over there. Um, I'm sorry, but where exactly? Look, if you can't find it on your own, then maybe you shouldn't be here. But, your highness... No buts! Haven't you heard that my dress is magical? Magic? Like it gives you superpowers? <gasps> Can you fly? No, but that would be cool. <laughs> the magic is that the dress can only be seen by those who deserve to see it. Oh! Oh! Right, so if you're telling me you can't see it, glamour guy Gary, then clearly you shouldn't be here in the presence of a super awesome emperor like me. <laughs> of course, your highness, I understand. Wait, oh, there it is. Ooh, this is so exciting. Oh my, and it is gorgeous. Hmm, describe it to me. 
Uh, sure. Well, it's long, um, and poofy, shiny, but not too shiny. Hmm, and the color? The color is so you, your highness. Words cannot express how beautiful this dress is. I simply can't say another word. Excellent. Let's get glam. Friday and Jeeves were on the hunt for the missing fashion designers, but Z and Dieter were not on the run. They had simply gone to their next fashion job. And you'll make me the best, most handsome suit ever? We'll design a suit for you, the likes of which no one has ever seen. You're going to like the way you look. We guarantee it. I like the sound of that. Now get to work. Yes, sir. Yes, word had gotten round that Emperor Matilda had hired Dieter and Z. So everyone who was anyone hired the two fashion designers to make their own coronation ensembles. And they were raking in the gold. We are rich. Let's buy a yacht. Ooh, and a miniature horse farm. I've always wanted a tiny horsey. I must say, dear Tur, this was our finest idea yet. The invisible dress. We do nothing and get all the money. I knew it. You have a wagon. You're still eating that donut? Oh, I'm savoring it. Ooh, I didn't see that coming. To be continued. Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Finally, it was the big day, the emperor's coronation party. All across the land, partygoers were getting ready for the celebration. Fashion designers Z and Dieter had gotten quite a few jobs making clothes for the many of the emperor's guests. Each was told the same thing. This outfit is magic. Only the very best people can see it. Hey, brother. <laughs> Looking good. I know. Those undies really bring out your eyes. What are you talking about? Your underwear? Oh, of course you can't see it. See what? My real clothes? They're magic. Only the very best people can see them. Uh-huh. Go on. So, since you're my annoying little brother who is but a lowly prince and will never be king, it makes sense you wouldn't be able to see my awesome outfit. Right. And you're definitely not just wearing underwear. Ugh, I should have known you wouldn't understand. And you're going to try to win Emperor Matilda's heart wearing your magic suit that's definitely not just underwear? She'll be able to see my real clothes, and believe me, she'll be impressed. Whatever you say, Gerald. <laughs> that was hilarious. Meanwhile, back at the palace, Friday and Jeeves had decided they had to tell the Emperor the truth. She was their friend. And friends don't let friends go to a party wearing big, silly bloomers. What if she doesn't believe us and thinks we just can't see the dress? She'll believe us. She's our friend. Okay, if you say so. Oh. My. Gosh. I look amazing. These shoes. Fabulous. <laughs> These jewels. Gorge. My makeup. Flawless. My hair. Fierce. Work it, girl. Now, time to put on my dress. Can you bring it to me? Glamour Gary stopped snapping. He could not fetch her dress. He couldn't see it. Gary had to think fast. I would, but I uh, have to go to the bathroom. It will just take a second. Just hand me the dress. <laughs> oh, can't. Gotta go. Must be the burrito I ate for breakfast. Woo, that was a close one. Friday, Jeeves, I need help. I need help putting on my dress. Your Highness, we need to tell you something. I don't really have time for stories. The coronation starts in an hour. I need my dress. About that. There is no dress. Excuse me? The dress isn't magic. It doesn't exist. The fashion designers tricked you. No, you're just saying that because you can't see the dress. Because you aren't worthy of seeing it. But... No, no but. Now get out, and don't even think about coming to the party. You're uninvited. The party is for friends only. <laughs> Oof, that's gotta hurt. Ouch, that was not a nice thing to say. And send in a maid to help me with my dress. Yes, your majesty. 
When Friday and Jeeves left, Emperor Matilda started to cry. She wasn't sure why. She usually only cried when she wanted something and couldn't have it. So why was she crying now? Was she upset because she herself could not see the dress and this confused her? Was she sad that she had spoken to her friends in such a mean way? Oh no, I hope she's okay. Chapter eight, here we go. The coronation party had begun and it was finally time for Emperor Matilda to make her big entrance. She now felt confident the magic dress was real and that Friday and Jeeves were wrong. And now presenting the one, the only, Emperor Matilda. See, these are my real people. They all love me. They can see the dress. Just then, Emperor Matilda caught sight of Prince Gerald. Huh? He's in his underwear. Hello, your highness. May I be the first to say you look beautiful? You're not the first to say that. A lot of people have said that. Right, right, of course. Well, looks like we've both got good taste. What do you mean? We use the same fashion designers. Your dress looks amazing, by the way. Do you like my suit? Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Uh, yeah. It's great. I gotta go. Okay, bye. What was that about? Is he crazy? He's in his underwear. Oh, what are all these people doing in their underwear? Your dress is awesome. Do you like mine? I used Z and Dieter. They're fabulous. What is going on? Wait, it can't be. What, what if I'm not worthy to see their clothes? No, I'm the emperor. I'm the most important person in the whole world. Or were Friday and Jeeves right? Is this a scam? Am I, am I in my underwear? Oh, excuse me, I need a moment. The good thing about being emperor is that you get a nice cushy throne to sit on, far, far away from everyone else. That comes in handy when you need a minute to think. Okay, let me just sit here and think. I have to figure out what's going on. But she was soon interrupted. Emperor, it is time to accept gifts from neighboring kingdoms. Oh, good, my favorite part. <laughs> People line up and tell me how wonderful I am and they give me presents. This will be a nice distraction from the whole underwear thing. <laughs> Ooh, this is so exciting. Presenting Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town. Your majesty, please accept my gift, a giant chocolate crown. Thank you, Lord Blaine. Uh, looks tasty, but may I inquire about your outfit? It's a Z and Dieter design, just like yours. Right. And now, Count Von Winklevoss of Dumbarton. Madam, please accept this pony and this compliment. Your dress is absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Next, your majesty, is Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas-shire. Your Highness, please accept this novelty thimble set. Is that gold? Yes, Your Majesty, but its beauty pales in comparison to you. Your dress sure is nice. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Next. Yes, ma'am. This is Baron Von Earl, Duke Sir of London Townville Place City. And you guessed it. Also rocking his undies. <laughs> that was hilarious. Emperor, I wish to give you these diamond earrings. Thank you. I love diamonds. They're expensive. Yes, and might I add, they would look beautiful with your dress. Hmm, my dress. You can see my dress? You're telling me you can see this dress, is that correct? Yes, of course. Just as I'm sure you can see my suit. Z and Dieter designed it. Emperor Matilda was so confused. She couldn't see any suits. All she could see was a bunch of silly underwear. What was going on? Was the entire world playing a big trick on her? And now, presenting Prince Gerald and Prince Joshua of Cape Dumbledore. Hello again, Matilda. Please accept this ring as a token of my undying affection. Oh, looks like I have room on my pinky. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that's a really nice suit. Thank you. I was talking to him. Him? Yeah, I like it. That prince is so handsome. Excuse me, your majesty. It's time to do the crown thingy. Your dad's here. Presenting Emperor Ignatius. It is with great honor that I... Emperor Ignatius. Emperor Ignatius, that's me. Let me start over. 
It is with great honor that I, Emperor Ignatius, present my daughter. Matilda. I know that. It is my great honor to present my daughter, Matilda, with the official very big crown of the Empire. I am too old for this job, so she's the boss now. Got it? <laughs> What in tarnation? Why is everybody in their underwear? Oh no, this doesn't look good. Chapter 9, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Your Highness, sir, it's the new trend. They're all wearing magic clothes. Surely you can see their real clothing. All I see is a bunch of goofy people dancing around in their underwear. Friday and Jeeves are right. I'm not wearing a magic dress at all. I'm just wearing these silly bloomers. Ooh! Emperor Matilda was so embarrassed. All this time she had been bragging about her magical clothes and now she knew for sure there were no magical clothes. Excuse me, your highness. Go away. I've been humiliated at my own party. This was supposed to be a special day. My day. Okay, well, I brought you a piece of cake. I thought that might cheer you up. Oh, uh, it might. Some people might say thank you. Mm, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Sure you don't want any company? Fine. I mean, thank you. Great party. <laughs> it was supposed to be a great party, and it got ruined by my dumb, not magic dress. What am I even saying? There is no dress. It was all made up to make me look silly in front of everyone. That is so sad. Well, you're not the only one. My brother Gerald was prancing around in his undies too. And all those other guys. But I'm the emperor. People are supposed to respect me. And this dress was supposed to show me who my real friends were. And if they can't see the dress, then they don't deserve to be my friend. Maybe it's the opposite. Your real friends should tell you the truth. Oh. Oh no, you're right. Friday and Jeeves tried to tell me, and I was so mean to them. Ah, I've messed everything up. I am the worst. <laughs> I don't think you're the worst. My brother Gerald is definitely more annoying than you. Jeeves, thanks. Let's go back to the party. This is your night. You should have some fun. I can't. I look silly. Do you want my jacket? No. No? <laughs> Wowzers. <laughs> Now let's go. Wait, first I have to do something. Come with me. Ooh, this is so exciting. Emperor Matilda and Prince Joshua ran through the palace. Friday, Jeeves. Friday, Jeeves. But it was no use. Friday and Jeeves were nowhere to be found. Oh, God, I must have hurt their feelings so much that they left the palace forever. But Friday and Jeeves were not gone at all. In fact, they were at the coronation party. You probably didn't notice before, but they were there the whole time. See, they were in disguise. And not because they didn't want to miss the party, they were on a mission. We have to find Z and Dieter. Yeah, they don't get to trick our friend and get away with it. They've got to be here somewhere. Conga. Conga! But then they got swept up in a conga line. There they are. Let's get them. I can't. The conga line is too powerful. We've been overtaken by the dance. What would you do if this happened to you? Hello. Come on, this is our chance. How low can you go? How low can you go? go? Woo! Wait, where'd they go? We lost them. Did we lose them? Yeah, like a little koala and a fox are gonna bring us down. Yeah, that would be crazy, right? Yeah, wait. Gotcha! Time to pay the piper, you charlatans. Uh-oh. OMG, I love it! Chapter 10, here we go. Come with us. We're taking you to the emperor. What for? What for? For tricking our friend into wearing some silly bloomers to her coronation party. And for taking her gold. We told you, the dress is magic. If you can't see it, that's not our fault. Oh yeah? Jeeves, you take Dieter. I've got Z. Okay, Smarty McSmartPants. What color is the dress? 
blue and pink. Orange and purple. Describe it. It is long with puffy sleeves and ruffles. It's short, covered in sparkles, and has a long train in the back. A choo-choo? Can you expect me to believe there's a choo-choo train attached to her dress? A train is a long piece of fabric on the back of a dress. Oh, I knew that. What else? Did I already say it's blue and pink? All right, I've heard enough. Let us compare notes. <laughs> Whoa, this place is crazy. Aha, we knew it! You both described totally different dresses. Your fibbers. Come with us. We are bringing you to Emperor Matilda so she can punish you. <sighs> it's no use. They're gone. I don't blame them. I was pretty mean. <laughs> What's everybody yelling for? Let's go find out. You tricked us. Yeah, do you realize how silly I look? I can't believe I'm wearing this. underwear. Friday, Jeeves, you're here. I know you said we weren't allowed at the party, but we have something to tell you. It's important. Please don't be mad. Uh, mad? I'm not mad. I'm so happy to see you. I owe you a huge apology. You were right. The magic dress was a big ol' sham, a scam, a flim flam. Wait, you know? Yeah, I finally figured it out. That's right, everybody. I'm in my underwear. So what? So is this guy, and that guy over there, and her, and him. <laughs> that was so funny. Who cares? This is my party, and I'll wear what I want. <laughs> and furthermore, I hereby decree that every year on this Date, we will celebrate with a bloomers only party! What do you want to do about these guys? Throw them in a dungeon? Make them eat worms? Put ketchup in their hair? Um, interesting ideas, but no. The only punishment that they will have is that they have to return the money that they took from us. What? No! I was going to buy a pony. Sorry, you're gonna give the money back and it will be donated to the good people of this empire. <laughs> Ice cream for everyone! Yeah! Mom, Mom Matilda! Yeah. Oh, and you have to clean up after the party and it's gonna be a rager, so it'll be a big, big mess. Oh. But I'm wearing couture! Uh, well, sorry, you should have thought of that before you scammed half the world and tricked us into wearing our undies. Even if we learned a lesson or two. Yeah. Like, maybe I shouldn't be such a show-off all the time, and maybe I should be grateful for my real friends. That's you guys. Yay, I'm so happy. Oh, that reminds me. I have to hereby officially decree something. I hereby decree that Friday and Jeeves are now Knights of the Empire. Really? Yep. You've been my friends for pretty much for forever. <laughs> and it's about time you'd be recognized for that. So, please, Neil. Does anybody have a sword? Ah, why do you need a sword? It's symbolic, don't worry. You knelt mere servants. Now rise up as Knights of the Empire. Now let's boogie! I'm so inspired by your wisdom and kindness, Emperor Matilda. May I have this dance? Oh, I'm sorry. My dance card is full. Come on, Prince Joshua. Let's get down to Groove Town. It had a rough start, but the coronation party proved to be a success. Emperor Matilda finally learned what it meant to be a friend. Someone who will tell you the truth. Someone who will be there when you need them and who has patience with you when you're maybe not so kind. Someone who will bring you chocolate cake when you're feeling sad to make you feel better. To good friends! To, to good, good friends. friends! Oh, and everyone had a blast dancing around in their silly underwear. Aw, happy ending! What a great story! Hello folks, and welcome to Booksy Interviews Bad Guys. <laughs> We've got a great show in store for you today full of fun, intrigue that we know you're gonna love. I have a very special guest for you on the show today. You might know him from such stories as The Three Little Pigs, Little Red Riding Hood, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Yes, you guessed it. He's big. He's bad. The Big Bad Wolf, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. It is I, the Big Bad Wolf. Good to see all of you. Okay, so Mr. Wolf. Oh, 
May I call you Wolf? Well, my full name is Wolfgang von Putostamen, but you can call me Wolf for short. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. Yes, yes, been very busy. Blowing down houses, scaring people, trying to find the candy, dressing up as grandmas. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me. Well, we wanted to give you a chance to clear the air, so to speak. You can try, but no matter what I do, everyone just thinks I'm bad. Aww. Aww. Well, for starters, where did you grow up? I grew up in a land far, far away called Furry Forest. Uh, I grew up in a wolf pack. Ooh. We did regular wolfy things, you know, running, hunting, little dancing. Say what? Oops, <laughs> that slipped. I didn't want anyone to know that I am a forest-renowned ballroom dancer. I've got to keep my street cred, you know what I mean? O-M-G. You must show us. Dance break, dance break, dance break, dance break. Dance break. Okay, dance break, if you insist. You got some serious moves, bro. Thank you. I sense a dance competition in our future. You, me, this is happening. <laughs> Maybe someday. What do you think, kids? Should me and the Big Bad Wolf do a dance competition? <laughs> Tell us in the comments below. Okay, next. What projects are you working on right now? Well, I've just finished redoing a house over in Porkville. Um, I hate to interrupt, but aren't you usually the one blowing the houses down? Yeah, but I'm trying to be a little nicer. Cool. So tell me, if you're a changed man, <clears throat> I mean wolf, <laughs> then I want you to say three nice things about Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, come on. Ah, just give it a try. Okay. She's very nice visiting her grandma. She bakes yummy cookies. And she's a super duper fast runner. And frankly, I think she'd make a great dinner. Wow, that Little Red sounds pretty cool. She's all right. So a little birdie told me that you've been working on a new book. The Art of the Scare, a memoir. Yeah, I've been working on it for quite a while. Lots of stories of me tricking people, scaring animals, eating people. Well, you don't seem that scary to me. Try me. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, now for a segment where we read comments from our fans. Here we go. Tweedledoo Smith 123 says, Big Bad Wolf, you are so hairy. Hey. I mean, I think your hair is pretty luxurious, if you ask me. This takes a little work, you know. Three brushes. How about one more comment? Fairybird ABC says, The pig said when you were huffing and puffing, your breath smelled like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, so sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, guys, it's me, Little Red, and I'm here to... I thought you said we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Yes, I know, but we have our special friend, Little Red, helping us tell the story. Okay, let's get back to it. So as I was saying, I'm Little Red, and I have such an epic story to tell you guys. There once was a family of pigs. Family meeting. Coming, Coming Mom. Mom. But first, mud milkshakes. Yeah. Yes. And I want chocolate. Please, can I have the mint chip? And I'll have a worm and cricket milkshake. Gross. Gross. What? I'm unique, OK? OK, piggies. We wanted to talk to you guys today because we are so happy that you are growing into big, strong pigs. And we have loved the past 32 years of raising you and having you live in our house and doing your laundry and you not paying rent. But we feel the time. You got to move out. <gasps> What? No, that can't be. Okay, we knew you wouldn't like this, but I didn't think you would take it this hard. Sorry, you're all grown up now. Bye. Harsh. You'll need to get jobs so you can pay for supplies to build your own houses. When I was your age, I had to walk 52 miles in the snow to my first job. Dad, we already heard this story a million times. Well, it's gonna be hard work for you guys, but we believe in you. My little piggies are all grown up. Don't worry, Mom. We got this. Secret sibling cheer? 
One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family. Stand up and holler. Aw, that's so sweet. And just when the three little pigs were amping themselves up to go out and look for jobs, there was a knock on the door. Who are you? Hey, don't be rude. Hello, who might you be, girl covered in red? I'm Little Red. Hmm, makes sense. I was wandering through these woods to get to my grandma's house. See, she's sick with a cold and I wanted to go cheer her up. <laughs> this story sounds so familiar, like a fairy tale my grandma read me when I was a little piglet. Anyways, I'm super exhausted and kind of just bored from walking around so long, so do you think I could chill with you guys for a bit? Well, we were just gonna go to downtown. We're getting jobs and moving on up. You could come with us. That sounds like an adventure. I'm sure Grandma will be fine for a little while longer. <laughs> Yay! Yay! But before you go, would you like a slug shake? Um, I'm afraid to ask what that is, so no thank you. <laughs> that was so funny. So Little Red and the three pigs went off to the town. They had fun and got to know each other. They played guessing games. Can you guess my favorite color? Hmm, that's easy. Red? Yellow, actually. Can you guess my favorite snack? Bacon. <gasps> Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Woo, that was a close one. They smelled the flowers. They made new friends. They stopped for a bite to eat. They ran around in circles. They basically did everything except find new jobs. This has been fun and all, guys, but we should really find somewhere that's hiring. But finding a job is so hard. <laughs> If only there was a place that we could go that helped pigs get jobs. If only it was that easy. Um, guys? Kind of like the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs? Yeah, let's go. So what brings you to us, the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get the jobs? Well, isn't it kind of obvious? What kind of jobs do you have available? Oh, many things. Cupcake makers, we need builders, painters, molecular biologists. Huh? We need the gingerbread decorators, truck drivers, teachers, professional nappers. Ooh, I want that one. Oh, I am so sorry, but none of these jobs are available right now. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, we need something. Our mom and dad are going to be super mad at us. Well, why don't you tell us what the pigs can do immediately? Yes, I have just the thing. Hey, you look familiar. Who, me? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you were saying that you had just the right jobs for these pigs? Yes, I have just the thing that'll bring home the bacon. What? <gasps> oh, <clears throat> no offense, just a figure of a speech. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I have the perfect job for you three. There's an opening at the candy factory. Ooh. Oh. You can start today. Here, sign these papers. What do they say? Don't worry about it. The pigs will have the best jobs in town. Hmm. I hope I can taste test candy. I hope I can swim in a candy pool. I just hope we can make some money soon so we can buy building supplies. You guys are going to do great. So the three pigs went to the first day of their job. Little Red followed along for support. They were nervous and excited. It took the pigs a little getting used to. I mean, they never worked a day in their life. They made mistakes. They were sometimes late. They sometimes said the wrong thing. Yeah, boss, I literally didn't work today. All I did was eat candy. Uh, oops. <laughs> that was hilarious. Sometimes they ate way too many pieces of candy and got belly aches. But after a while, they saved up enough money to build their own houses. So Little Red went with the first pig to the store. So what do you think you need to build a strong house? Hmm, I want something quick, because I'd rather be doing anything else besides building. How about this? No way. One drop of rain and the paper will disintegrate. Marshmallows? No. Slime? No. OK, fine. Straw it is. Oh, I don't think straw is going to be super strong. Too bad, I'm bored, let's go. Ugh, Hamon, I don't know about this. Oh, did I tell you his name is Hamon? So Little Red helped Hamon build his house of straw. It looked okay, but Little Red knew it probably wasn't a very strong house. Wow! You did it! It looks nice. Uh-oh, you better watch out. 
Well, let's see how this goes. I am so tired, I need a nap. While Hamon napped, Little Red called her grandma to check on how she was feeling. Hey grandma, sup girl, how you feeling? Oh Red, I am so happy to hear your voice. I hope you don't mind, but I might be a little late because I'm helping some friends. Of course, you are such a good friend. You rest and drink some tea grandma and I'll be there soon. Love you, bye. Suddenly there was a loud noise coming from outside. It sounded like an engine of some sort. Little Red ran to the window to see what was happening. Oh, little pig, little pig. It's that interviewer guy. He really looks familiar. The sound of the leaf blower woke Hamon up from his slumber. What? What's happening? Where am I? Is this my house? Yeah, dude, this is your house that you built. Remember? But that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs is outside. He looks a little mad. We're a little excited? I'm not really sure. Little pig, let me in, let me in. I don't want to let him in. I have morning breath and this place is a mess. Sorry, you can't come in. Yeah, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Like seriously, this thing is hairy. I need to shave before I see anyone. It's like one little hair. Whatever. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. That is so not cool. That escalated quickly. Why would he do that? My house. I worked so moderately hard on that. What are we gonna do? And where did that guy go? But the wolf was nowhere to be found. Come on, let's go to my brother's house. We can crash with him. Oh man, I really hope he chose something stronger to build his house with. I just knew straw was not a good plan. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red and Hamon were running to their brother's house when suddenly they got a call from Mom Pig. Oh, hello, my sweet darling. I miss you so much. How is it going over there? Is everything okay? Eh, what do I say? I don't want her to know about the whole house getting destroyed, thingy. Just be honest. I'm gonna tell her that I'm just going to visit my brother, Hamilton. It's always better to tell the truth. Um, hi, Mom. Doing great. Out for a jog with Little Red. We're going to see Hamilton now. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I only miss you a tiny bit. Oh, so cute. Gotta go, Ma. We're uh, doing some stretches. We're almost there. I can see him right over there. Hamilton was just getting home from work. Hey, dude, we have a big problem. Yeah, the creepy guy from that place blew my entire house down. How could he do that? It seems like he'd need a lot of air. Like, like... <sighs> <coughs> He had a leaf blower. I don't know what his deal is, but can we crash with you? Well, I haven't actually finished building my house. Yeah, it looks like it needs a bit of work. What did you use to make it? Uh, I just found a bunch of sticks lying around in the forest. Why? What did you do with all your money? I I'm not gonna tell you I spent it all on gummy bears and comic books, but... <laughs> that was so funny. You spent all your money on gummy bears and comic books? Let's just fix this thing, okay? We'll help, I guess. If it means we can stay, fine. So the three of them tried to finish the house of sticks. Just like straw, the sticks were not very strong. So they kept having to fix little parts of the broken house. They tried tape. They used glue. They even tried using chewing gum as adhesive. When they were done, the house looked a little crazy. I guess you could call it rustic. Now that we have so much extra time, since we're not doing annoying things like building a house, let's have some fun. Party, party, party. Yeah, let's play games. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's eat. And my favorite, let's dance. The two pigs and Little Red played and danced and enjoyed themselves until they realized they were almost going to be late for work, again. <laughs> uh, that was a good joke, Hamilton. Whoa, guys, we gotta go. Hopefully your sister Porchetta gets there in time too. 
But what they didn't realize was that Porchetta was already at work. She had been working overtime so that she could save up lots of extra money to build a strong house. So when the others got to the candy factory, they were surprised to see her. Why are you working so hard? There's so many better things to do besides work. Ugh. Yeah, Porchetta, you're being so weird. All you're doing is working and not even having fun. Lame. Well, guys, it's important to do your job well. And it's good to take your time. I don't want to rush my house building. Otherwise, something bad could happen to it. Ooh, that makes sense. Bad? Like, I don't know, maybe the house being blown down or something? What? Nothing. Nothing. All right, all right, let's just do our job so we can go home. So all the pigs and Little Red worked all day. They taste tested candy. They fixed broken machines. They separated sprinkles by color. They took a lunch break. They helped lift heavy chocolate bars. They took a nap break. At the end of the day, everyone was super tired and super ready to go home. Hamon and Hamilton said their goodbyes to Porchetta. I'm going to stay and work a little bit more. Whatever. Bye. But while they were at work, the Big Bad Wolf paid a visit to Hamilton's stick house and blew the thing down with a huge fan. What? No. That can't be. And remember, the pigs in Little Red didn't realize it was the Big Bad Wolf yet. What the? What was this dude's deal? Well, the pigs were in for quite a surprise. No! My beautiful, rustic, fragile house! I'll bet it was that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs. I'm telling you, that guy looked so familiar. I just get a bad feeling around him. Us, Us too. too! What are you going to do now? It's getting dark. I'm totally starving, and we have nowhere to sleep. I think you know what you guys have to do. Go find a hot air balloon and fly to Antarctica and change your names forever? No, I think you should apologize for being mean to Porchetta and see if she'll let you stay at her house. Uh, I don't like apologizing. Me neither. Well, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to just because it's the right thing. Uh, you're probably right. Plus, we really need help. This should be interesting. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red, Hamon, and Hamilton, with their piggy tails between their legs, went to talk to their sister. When they arrived, they were in for quite a surprise. Oh guys, it looks like her house isn't even done yet. Uh, hello, Porchetta. We started building like weeks ago. Uh, -huh. what's taking so long? Hi, guys. Well, it takes time if you want to do a good job. Oh, now I get it. Blech. Who would want to do a good job? I just want it to be fast. I mean, maybe we could have tried a little harder on our houses? Come on. Why don't you tell her what happened? Well, basically, our houses are gone, kaput, zilch, dunzo. What? How? What happened? I don't know. I mean, you'd think straw and sticks would be... You built your houses with straw and sticks? No wonder they fell down. Well, they didn't exactly fall down. The pigs explained to Porchetta the whole story. She was shocked, but also not 100% surprised because her brothers were known for always taking the easy route. So if you guys learned your lesson... That we should have stayed with mom and dad? No, that it's important to work hard and take your time doing things the right way. Even if it's really, really annoying? Yes, even if it's really annoying. So what are we gonna do to make things right? Well, I guess we should say we're sorry, Porchetta, for being rude to you. That's okay, we're family. Let's build this house together and keep that crazy guy out. Aw, that's so sweet. He kind of looks like a wolf. OMG, that's it. He's the big bad wolf. I've dealt with that guy before. Ah, uh, we pigs definitely don't like wolves. Well, we just need to make this house super strong. I've been using bricks, one by one. Oh man, no wonder you have such strong muscles. Yep. And we should set traps, just in case. So they all worked together and really hard to make a house out of bricks. It was difficult and they had to take little breaks. You guys, I'm sweating over here. Let's have some lemonade. Oh, 
I forgot I had a bunch of treats in my basket. Let's have a little picnic. Ooh, cranberry scones, my favorite. Ooh, it's so good, but ooh, I'm sleepy. And so they all took a well-deserved little rest. While they were sleeping, the big bad wolf showed up. He tiptoed past them so they wouldn't wake up. But when he tried to open Porchetta's front door, What is that? Yes, my first trap worked. I'll be back. Whew, that was a close one. Good thinking, Hamon. You saved us. Saved by the slime, yeah. What do you think the wolf wanted? Yeah, are we in trouble? There is something fishy going on here. I guess we do need to set some traps, just in case he comes back. So they set up all different kinds of traps to protect them from the wolf. They set up invisible wire. They filled buckets with glue and feathers. They spread out syrup all over the floor to make them stick and not be able to run away. They made that thingy. Well, the whole house is basically ready. Yay, secret sibling cheer. Let's do it. One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand up and holler. Yeah. While the pigs in Little Red were feeling really proud of themselves, Mom and Dad Pig were at home, feeling, well... Oh, 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 I miss my little piglet so much! That's so sad. Darling, they are 32 years old. It was time for them to move out. But there's so much more I wanted to teach them. They don't even know how to make beef bourguignon yet. That doesn't sound too necessary, but that is your favorite dish. What are we supposed to do now? I guess we could sit on these chairs and stare out the window for the rest of our lives. So yeah, you could say they weren't dealing with the separation too well, but back at the brick house, things were getting interesting. So you just take these two corners and put them together like this. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, we really could have been doing this ourselves for the past, oh, 20 years. Mom and Dad really did a lot for us. It feels good to be on our own. I love learning new things. And next, I'm going to teach you to balance a checkbook. Whoa, now you guys really are grown up pigs. The pigs in Little Red were so excited about being grown ups now that they did so many grown up things. They went food shopping, they paid bills. They even babysat their neighbor's baby piglets. They did a great job. I am so proud of us. But one thing we haven't faced yet, the wolf. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So like I said, the pigs in Little Red were doing lots of grown up things. Only problem was they hadn't faced the wolf yet. Was he going to come and try and blow the brick house down? That wolf may come back soon, but we can't wait around forever for bad things to happen. That's true. So what is something really grown up you can do right now? I, I, I really want to visit mom and dad. <clears throat> I mean, we, we should go say hi or, or whatever. I hope they'll be okay. You're right, Hamilton. We'll show them how responsible we'll be in now. Little Red, you coming? Yeah, this I gotta see. <laughs> So they all went for a visit to the pig parents. Luckily, Mom Pig had that classic maternal instinct and must have predicted their return because warm, freshly made chocolate chip cookies were waiting for the pigs when they arrived. Finally, all of my little piglets under one roof again. Oh, how I missed you. While we're here, maybe you guys should be honest with your parents about what happened to your houses? Well, um... Come on, guys. Honesty is the best policy. We were being kind of lazy. And we took the easier road. But it didn't turn out so good. Yeah, we made our houses out of sticks and straw, and then this wolf guy came and blew our houses down. <gasps> but, but don't worry. They learned their lesson and have been working really hard to make one big, strong house. You. <sighs> Here, we have some pictures of what we've been up to. Oh, so cute. I mean, not everything went according to plan. <laughs> oh yeah, this one time we were cooking soup. And we mistook sugar for salt. So we ended up with this really sweet broccoli soup. Ew. I mean, I didn't hate it. It was kind of good. <laughs> 
We are so proud of you all. You really are growing up and learning how to do things for yourselves. Well, we learned from the best, you guys. Aww. We really should be going. See you all soon. And Little Red, thanks for helping our piglets. You betcha. Bye. See you Bye. later. Love See ya. So Little Red and the pigs headed towards the fairy tale forest to get to their brick house. They were enjoying the stroll when suddenly they almost ran into the white rabbit. Man, what is going on? Now this guy looks really familiar too. I'm late, I'm late, I'm very, very late. Well, don't let us stop you. It looks like you're on a very important mission. I am, and I'm late, but the strangest thing happened just a moment ago. Uh, are you gonna tell us, or what? Oh, right. Well, I was hopping along, minding my own beeswax, when I ran into this big wolf-looking guy. The wolf. wolf! The big bad wolf? Oh, no. Right, and he said he was also running late. Yeah? To go see a family of pigs. Ah. And you all look like pigs to me, so I thought I'd just let you know. Thank you, sir. We gotta go. They ran back to their brick house, but luckily when they arrived home, no wolf was in sight. <sighs> oh, looks like we beat him here. Well, all our traps are ready, so let's just wait. Little Red and the pigs waited, and waited, and waited. But they were abruptly awoken by the sound of their doorbell. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Ah, watch out! Not, Not by, by the hairs, hairs of our chin chin chins. Chin chin. Well, then I'll hop, and I'll pop, and I'll... Okay, you can come in. Sheesh, finally. Whoa! Sounds like the first thing worked. Pigs, where are you? We're in here, come find us. When the wolf came through the next door, a big bucket of glue dumped on him from above. Then Hamon tossed a bag of feathers on top of the glue. He kind of looked like a chicken. We don't know why you've been so mean to us and destroyed our houses, but you're not getting this one too. Yeah. Oh, there you are. He started to run towards the pigs, but got stuck on the syrup on the floor trap. What in the world? Ha ha, gotcha. Now you're gonna tell us what you've been up to, or else. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the pigs and Little Red had finally caught the wolf. He was stuck in a syrup on the floor trap. Sounds sticky, but also kind of yummy. See here, Wolf, you gotta answer some tough questions. Me? Yeah, you. First, where did you get that shirt? It's so cute. Well, it was on sale at... No, stop. We want to know why you're here. Yeah, why did you blow down my house of straw? And why did you blow down my house of sticks? And will you reimburse me for the $4 it took to make it? Hello, I need the cash. And honestly, you've really scared me. I have a fear of leaf blowers. And I have a fear of little pieces of wood. Um, aren't sticks basically little pieces of wood? And you built your house out of them? Maybe. Whatever, Little Red. <laughs> that was hilarious. And I'm afraid we are never going to get to the bottom of this if you two goofballs don't hush and let the wolf answer our questions. Right. Okay, Mr. Uh, wolf Guy. My friends call me Fred. Whatever. You destroyed my friends' houses, and you scared us, and you even came back to destroy this house. What gives? Well, uh... Tell us. The truth is, it was all an accident. What? Remember those papers I had you sign when you got the job? Yeah? yeah. Well, they're actually the deeds to your unbuilt houses. How dare you? What are deeds again? Well, basically, I had them sign over the houses to me so that I own them. You lied to us. Sort of. Oh, that's so not cool. Why did you come back here then? Well, I was planning my next heist when I got a special visit from the fairy godmother. Do da, do da, do. Oh, big bad wolf. Ah, what? Who? What are you? Um, you don't know me. I'm pretty famous. You look a little like my grandma, but with wings. Well, I'll have you know, I am the fairy godmother. 
Okay. Ah, ah, ah. We need to talk. But I don't like talking to all the people. Pardon me. So rude. And I am only 3,856 years young anyway. You're right. I am sorry. Old people are lovely. I'm just a little bit on edge. Well, you should be, because I know you have been up to no good. Excuse me? I have only been tricking a bunch of innocent and a little bit dense pigs into signing their entire life savings and their houses over to me. What's so bad about that? Wow, that is so mean. Um, are you kidding? You know, now that I say it out loud, it does sound uh, pretty bad. So, Wolf, deep down you know it's not kind of trick people. But they are not people. They are pigs. You know what I mean. And it's important to not be selfish. And you should think of others. I know. I know. You need to make it right. Go apologize and fix it. So that's basically what happened with the fairy godmother. Wow. And that's why I came to each of your houses to apologize and give you new papers to sign. You promise these are the right papers? That you aren't tricking us again? Yes, of course. These papers will fix everything. One question, though. Why were you always talking about huffing and puffing and... Oh, simple. I have the worst asthma. I'm pretty much always huffing and puffing. And why did you blow our houses down with fans and leaf blowers? I was bringing those to you as a housewarming gift. But I'm not so good with machines, so I lost control. So you blew the houses down by accident? Pretty much. Oh, now I get it. Well, I guess we should also apologize to you, because I think our traps were a little bit mean. Yeah, they didn't make me feel too good. But it does taste good. We are sorry. We just needed to defend ourselves against home invaders. I get it. Well, it sounds like everything is all worked out. I think there's only one thing left to do. What? what? Have a dance party! Yay! Yay! So the new friends danced and danced and danced. Porchetta was actually a really good dancer. Check this out. Little Red, on the other hand, was pretty silly. After all was said and done, they had a great time together. But Little Red realized something. My grandma. Little Red hadn't exactly forgotten about visiting her grandma. After all, she had kept checking on her and knew she was feeling better, but still. Well, I have to get there fast. Anyone have an electric scooter? Those things are awesome. Actually, I can call in a favor. I know a guy. Ooh, sounds interesting. Look out below. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye, Red. Well, I think it's time for cupcakes. Yay! Yay. I just love happy endings. Hi there, it's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Goldilocks. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So there once was a young girl named Goldilocks. She had beautiful, long, golden hair. Um, hello? <clears throat> I mean, she used to have long, golden locks way back when she was a little girl. Do, 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 do. I love playing with my train set. Goldilocks, oh Goldilocks, it's time to do your homework. Aw oh, man, oh, that's so not cool. You stay right there, conductor. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, mom, what do I have today? Math, phonics, geography, typography, phonography. <laughs> <laughs> Just some spelling. And after you do that, I need you to go next door and borrow a cup of flour from the neighbors. I'm making your favorite, pumpkin chocolate chip bread. Mmm, I love that. Done, BRB, I'm gonna see about that flower. But as Goldilocks walked next door, it started to get cold out and a little drizzly. Urgh, I better make this quick. And just as Goldilocks went to ring the doorbell, there was a bolt of lightning that hit the house. And the electric current rushed through young Goldilocks' body. Don't worry, it didn't hurt or anything. It was just a magical electric jolt. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. What? Hey, Mom, sorry, they weren't home. Maybe I can try later. I was hoping that... Um, Goldie? Um, uh, Mom? Your hair! My hair? My... Wait, what? I mean, it's beautiful. I'm just surprised. Ooh, I like it. It must have been those magical sparkles. That sentence should make me nervous. 
and from that day forward, she always had brown hair. Yep, but everyone still called me Goldilocks cause, well, that's my name. Goldilocks, oh Goldilocks. Here we go again. Hey mom, do I have to do my homework? <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask what you wanted to do for your birthday? Well, I've always wanted to go on a camping trip with my friends. Sounds like a great idea. Why don't you call them up and invite them? Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, Walla. Hi, Goldie. What's up? Want to do a camping trip with me this weekend? Ooh, you know I'm up for anything. Yes, let's call Zoro. Hi, guys. Zoro, are you ready for a super amazing adventure this weekend? Um, maybe. Camping trip. Camping trip! Camping trip! <laughs> We're going on a camping trip to celebrate my birthday. You know you're coming with. Um, I think I have to wash my hair. Come on, Zoro. You can wash your hair in nature's shower. A waterfall. I'm not so sure. I may be sick. <coughs> hmm, that sounds suspicious. Oh, so we're all, look, it sounds like a camping trip might be making you a little nervous, but I promise, we'll all stick together and if things get hairy, we'll just come back and camp out at my house. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I think I can do that. So they all packed their bags for their camping trip. They met up and went on their way. This is gonna be so much fun. I packed lots of games and flashlights and of course snacks. Yeah. Maybe you should pull that flashlight out right now. It's starting to get dark. Uh, and I just felt a raindrop. Oh man, our tent is not waterproof. Hey, I see a light over there. Come on, let's go. I hope they're home. That was really scary. Oh. Sorry, guys. That doorbell woke me up for my evening nap. You scared me. I wasn't scared. <laughs> Is there something I can help you with? Well, we're on a camping trip. But, like, it's really cold and dark and creepy. And we just wanted to take a break somewhere warm. <laughs> oh, well, the bear family always... Bears? Did you say bears? Where? Who? What? So, um... A family of bears lives in this house? Yeah, but... Whoa, maybe we're related. I'm a koala bear. Nah, these are your typical big, brown, large, hungry, hairy bears. Oh. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Um, maybe we should just step back this way. No, they aren't even home. Oh. oh. Let me tell you a little about this bear family. Whew, that was a close one. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. So let me tell you a little about this bear family. So there was Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. I'm not really a baby. I'm like a big kid, but everyone still calls me baby. Oh, well. Well, who are you talking to, baby? Uh, no one. Okay, clean up your place. Okay, Mom. Hold on, let me get this on camera. Wait a minute, why would the Papa Bear film the family doing literally nothing special? Cause they're a family of bear vloggers. <laughs> that was so funny. Ooh, actually, I think I've seen their channel before. Yeah, they just film their daily lives. Oh. Back to the story. So while Papa Bear was filming Baby cleaning up her breakfast, he heard a loud knock at the door. Who could that be so early in the morning? Um, ho there, friend. How can I help you? Hello, Bear family. I'm here to present you with a challenge. Ooh, I love challenges! This is a scavenger hunt, and all the family vloggers are participating. Here's your briefcase. One quick question, businessman. Goodbye. Um, okay. Well, that was weird. Open it! Open it! Open it! Okay, let's see. The first clue says, see if you can keep up the pace, meet at the wolf's house for a race. Let's go. So the bear family sped off to the big bear wolf's house. 
ha! I've been waiting for some victims. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, participants to come and race me. Let's go, Wolf! Wait, so who won the race? I hope it was Baby Bear. Wow! A tie? Oh, I do not like a tie. Wolves like to win. Wanna go again? No. Oh, I have to go scare some little pigs now. Oh, that's so not cool. Whatever. Here is your next card. It says, your next challenge is to work together and bake. Go get ingredients for strawberry cupcake. Mmm, my favorite. So they went to the store to get yummy ingredients. So, what happened next? I don't know. They're still at the store. They've been at that store for a while, though. Ooh, I hope they come back soon, because I love, love, love strawberry cupcakes. With sprinkles on top? Yeah. So, uh, is there something I could help you with? Oh, sorry. I mean, maybe we can just go inside for a few minutes to take a little break. Yeah, I need to put my tootsies up. We've been walking for hours. Zorro, it's literally been like seven minutes. Still, I'm tired, okay? Think they'd mind, Bird? Ah, not at all. They're very welcoming. I'll stay out here and keep watch for any mountain lions. Mountain lions? Ah, watch out! Well, they sure left in a rush. Yeah, look at this place. Whoa! Ah, this is the life. Ooh, here's a big giant eggplant parmesan. <coughs> nah, too tomatoey. And here's a kind of mommy sized fruit salad. Mm, I don't know, a little too tart. Oh, look, guys, a teeny tiny little baby sized smoothie. Ooh, come on, have a try. Ah, just, just right. right. Now let's go see about some chairs. Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Uh-oh. What was that? Let's go investigate. Oh, hello. Ah, not lines. Quick, put a blanket on the window and he won't see us. Good idea. Uh, guys. Shh. Uh, you guys. Mr. Bird, OMG, don't look now, but you're right next to a mountain lion. Run, save yourself. Run! Run! You guys! What? This is Mac, mountain lion, the delivery guy? Oh. oh. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. The Bear family ordered a bunch of new chairs. It was just talking about chairs. Well, I'm off. I have some ottomans to deliver to a goat family nearby. Ooh, let's test these chairs out. Ooh, so spacious. Yeah, I could get used to this. I wonder what this lever does right over <gasps> here. Whoa, that was fun. <laughs> but maybe a little too dangerous. Next! Oh, my booty feels a little squished. Yeah, but look, it has wheels. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Too spinny. Wow, that first chair was too dangerous, and this chair is too... Nauseating. Well, there's one more chair to try. Ah, just, just right. right. So the three friends settled in and watched some shows on TV. I want my pick. No, I want my show pick. Hey guys, how about we just watch some cool school on YouTube? Yeah! Meanwhile, back at the food store, the Bear family was continuing their scavenger hunt. Okay, we have flour, we got sugar, eggs, baking soda, and vanilla. We still need butter and strawberries. And we only have three minutes on our time left. Quick, run! Butter! Strawberries! Run!
Run, everybody! Run! Oh, oh no! no! We'll never make it in time! Hold on! You just have to wait, Baby Bear. Your mama has superpowers. She does? Problem solved! Step right up. What? I know the owner. That's amazing. Mama, you're so cool. Let's just get the stuff and go. Back at the fair's house, things were getting a little silly. Cabin fever was settling in. Hey guys, watch me balance this teapot on my head. Whoa. <laughs> hey guys, how many of these crackers do you think I can shove in my mouth at once? Mm. Oh. <laughs> Look at me! Everything is topsy turvy. <gasps> we wanna, wanna try! try. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Everything seems so backwards from down here. Yeah, the ceiling's on the floor and the floor's on the ceiling. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> I really need to stop doing aerobics when I'm not warmed up. That was hilarious. Kids, don't forget, the bear family was on their way back to their house. <sighs> Maybe we should find somewhere to rest. Yeah, and take a long sleep. I'm not kidding, kids. They would be back at their house any minute and these guys are talking about sleeping. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's read another story. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. I can't wait to get home and stop making these cupcakes. And then we still have more clues for our scavenger hunt. This day is awesome. Totally, totally awesome. awesome. <sighs> Man, I'm really getting sleepy. We should find somewhere to rest. Exploration time. Hey guys, a bed, looks cozy. Wait, Walla and Zoro, stay still. You look so cool, I wanna paint a portrait of you. Wow, very modern. <laughs> OMG, I love it. <sighs> Cannonball! So the group of friends tried out the first bed. It was really big though, so they felt way too far apart. Guys, I think this bed is too... Lonely. Huh? I can't hear all the way over here. Guys, I say we try the next room. Let's go! Whoa, this is so cool. I think I can see Jupiter. And look. Let's try. But since the bed was round, whoa, whoa, I can't keep my balance. Whoa. Yeah, sorry guys, this bed is too wobbly. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Next. I've always wanted to go to a carnival. And I've always wanted to go on a merry-go-round. Come on! Whoa! 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 <laughs> I think I need a break. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm getting really sleepy. OMG, you guys, look! This looks... Just right. Yeah. Meanwhile, we are home! Whoa, whoa. Oh, hold on, there's. Uh, uh, uh oh. What happened here? Somebody's been eating my eggplant parmesan. And someone's been eating my fruit salad. Hey, I wanted that, it was organic. And someone drank all my smoothie. What in the what? This is a mystery. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Oh look, our delivery of chairs came from Amazon. But it looks like they've all been tampered with. 
This is all so weird. Somebody's been sitting in my recliner. It has three little booty marks in it. And someone has been spinning in my desk chair. The wheels are all twisted. Oh, my. And someone's... Oh, hold up. This is really comfy. I'm starting to fall. Plus, I mean, someone's been sitting in my beanbag chair. Well, this simply will not do. Did you hear that? Yeah, it sounded like a trumpet or a duck or... A snoring fox. What? That's oddly specific. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's no snoring fox in our house. I have impeccable hearing. I know a snoring fox when I hear one. Let's investigate. To our rooms. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little bothered here. Someone's been messing with my paints. Um, you guys, what is this? A box, Dad! I knew it, but how? Quick, check my room. <laughs> hmm, nothing too suspicious here. <gasps> what? Is it bad? Is there a clue? Oh, I don't know about that, but the clouds look like teddy bears. Okay, okay, to the last and final room. Come on! Oh no, run! <gasps> Someone is sleeping in my tent! <gasps> To be continued. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. You've been caught red-handed. Someone's been sleeping in my tent. Uh-oh. I hope they'll be okay. What's going on in here? Huh? What happened? Where am I? Mommy? Zoro, shh. I think we might be in a pickle here. Ooh, I want a dill pickle. Shh. No, Walla, a pickle? Like, I think we're in trouble. <clears throat> Please explain yourselves, strangers. And did you eat my fruit salad? She, she did, did it! Hmm. Quick, run! Please don't bite me! What? I would never! I'm vegan! And my mama told me it's not nice to bite. Which reminds me of this one time when I was biting down on a lollipop and my tooth quacked. And... Um, I, I don't mean to interrupt or be rude here, but are we going to continue this whole epic chase scene or what? Well... Well... Well, I have a better idea. Why don't they help us make the cupcake? Did somebody say cupcakes? <gasps> Sounds like a great compromise. Yay! Aw, that's so sweet. I hope you don't mind being filmed. We're vlogging our whole treasure hunt. Cool. Come on, let's get the ingredients together. Oops, sorry. Oh, no, that was hilarious. Do it again. But then they opened the strawberries. Their next clue was inside. It says... The evil stepmother has the thing you're looking for. Come to her house and see what's in store. Ooh, mysterious. <laughs> the, evil, the evil stepmother. Yeah, that's cool. I'm not scared of her or anything. It sounds like you're maybe a little scared. <laughs> Me? Ha! Ah! Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Well, let's all go together. The more the merrier. Yay! Scavenger hunt! Doesn't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> so the entire group went over the evil stepmother's house to find the last clue. Well, who's gonna ring the doorbell? Anyone? All right, fine. I'll do it. I've been expecting you. What? Where's my pod tie? Huh? 
Um, I went to the food delivery service. Whew, that was a close one. I mean, I can make a mean noodle dish if you... No, Mama Bear. <clears throat> we are here to collect the final clue for the scavenger hunt. Oh, I'm getting hangry over here. They better not have delivered my food to the trolls down the street. Um, hello, the clue? Hey, help me out here. Can you give me an evil face of some sort? Huh? Don't worry about him. So can we come in or what? I guess. Okay, I know I put it somewhere in here. Nope. Not that. Oh, here it is. Whoa, wait a minute. That's not your glass slipper. Did you take it from Cinderella? What? Me? Certainly not. I'm just borrowing it for this silly game. Well, you better give it back to her when this is all done. Of course. Ah, open up the clue. I can't wait to find out what it is. It says, join me at my royal castle tonight. Singing, dancing, and snacks. It'll be a sight. Don't let this fun opportunity pass and bring back my slipper of glass. Ooh, this is so exciting. Guys, I think it's from Cinderella. If there's gonna be snacks, I'm Gail. Wait, a party at the royal castle? Like, AKA a royal ball? <laughs> this is gonna be epic. You know what? I have a great idea. Whoa. Whoa. We get to ride that? Sure. Wow. So totally out of character for you to be so kind. People can change. I have a nice side. This is it. So everyone piled into the magical carriage and made their way to the ball. When they arrived, it was awesome. <gasps> there was chocolate cake. There was a balloon animal maker. There was a puppet show. There was even a conga line. Whoa. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> hey, look. There's Cinderella. Hear ye, hear ye. Can all my scavenger hunt folks come forward? That's us. I wonder if we win a special prize. Well, I sent you all on this magical scavenger hunt. And it's come to a close here at the Royal Ball. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Since you made it through, your prize is... To be continued. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Since you all made it through the whole royal scavenger hunt, the prize is... Yeah? yeah. Really cool. Yeah? yeah? Something we've never done before. Just tell us already. Oh, ahem. excuse me. The prize is that every single Friday, you guys get to come to the castle for a super fun, super royal, super special party! <gasps> That's amazing! Whoa! Mmm, I'd say the snacks here surely are delicious. Count us in! I just gotta check with my mom. <laughs> yeah, me too. Whoa, wait, speaking of my mom, we should really be heading back home. Yeah, let's go. It's way past our bedtime. Aw, wish you didn't have to leave. This was so much fun. Yeah, but we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Anytime, friend. Excuse me, Cinderella. You don't happen to have a carriage for our friends here, do you? Psst, do I? How about this for a carriage? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is awesome. That's so magical. See ya. Bye-bye. Guys, do you have the sudden feeling like we're being followed? Ah, mountain lion! Get back! Stay away, scary creature! <laughs> Yum! You guys, stop! Oh, <laughs> it's just Mac the Mountain Lion, the delivery guy. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. Well, now I feel sheepish. 
Just wanted to return this to you. You left it at the bear's house. Oh, I didn't even know I packed that. Thank you. <laughs> Aw, that is so nice. See ya. Giddy up. Take us up to the House of Goldilocks, good sir. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <sighs> that was epic. <laughs> well, Goldie, it's still technically your campout weekend. Hmm, OMG, I kind of totally forgot about it. <laughs> well, I guess we could still camp out. Zoro, you sure? I think so. I guess our adventure gave you a bit more bravery, huh? Maybe you're right. <laughs> Let's do it. Tuckered out. Me too. Me three. The next morning, it was Goldilocks's actual birthday. Walla and Zoro had a special surprise for her. Happy birthday to Goldilocks. Happy birthday to you. Oh, so cute. You guys, this is too much. Blow out your candle and make a wish. Okay. <laughs> What'd you wish for? Zoro, she can't tell you. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. One of my biggest birthday wishes already came true. Hanging out with you guys and going on an awesome adventure. Aww. Well, this has been so cool, but I guess we should pack up and head back home. But what the gang didn't know was that there was an epic surprise waiting for Goldilocks. Surprise! Happy birthday, honey! What the what? Mom! And how did you know to invite my new friends? Honestly, I have no idea who all these people are. But who doesn't love a party? <laughs> this has def been a party-filled day so far. Well, that's what birthdays are for. Happy birthday, Goldilocks! Aw, man. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so that's it. That's the story of my totally out-of-this-world birthday camping trip slash encounter with a family of bears slash scavenger hunt slash amazingly fun time. Yep, that's the story of me, Goldilocks, and the three bears. Aw, happy ending. Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is story time. Today, we're reading The Little Mermaid. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Very little. See, there she is. Anyway, The Little Mermaid was not just a mermaid, she was also a princess, daughter of the mighty sea king. And she had five older sisters, also princesses. One of The Little Mermaid's favorite things to do was listen to her sister's stories about the world beyond the water. See, whenever one of the princesses turned 18, she was allowed to go to the surface of the ocean. There, she could see the sky, and the birds, and the clouds. And if they were extra lucky, they might even see a ship with humans on board. Sometimes, though, the Little Mermaid got the sense that her sisters were just making stuff up. Human people have eight legs. They kind of look like octopuses. <laughs> that was so funny. I think it's octopi. Whatever. And some humans have a horn on their head, like a narwhal. No way! You'll see. Land people have eyes all over their bodies, so they can see everything at once. nuh -uh. Yeah, they do. Blech, I don't believe it. I think humans are beautiful. I guess they are, if you like lots of eyes and horns and stuff. When the Little Mermaid was almost 100% sure they were fibbing, she would go to her dad. Dad, is it true that human people have eight legs and a narwhal horn and lots of eyes and that they wrestle sharks and eat whale blubber for dessert? The only thing you should know about people is that they can be dangerous and you should never speak to one. Ugh, when am I going to get my chance to see the humans? I feel like I'll never turn 18. Uh-oh, she better watch out. But of course she did grow up. See, there she is, right before her 18th birthday. 
Hi! <laughs> Let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. At night, each princess slept in a bed of beautiful sea flowers. And you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. Actually, we did lots of things that human girls do, just a little differently. We played sports. Wow, this is so fun. We went to the movies. Only problem, popcorn gets soggy underwater. We acted in plays. To swim or not to swim? That is the question. You should have seen me in South Pacific. The Ocean Times said I was a star. Imagine, me a starfish. <laughs> so basically, I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend was a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. Dolphin, I would swim around and get into all kinds of adventures. <laughs> like one time, we swam way super deep down into the part of the ocean that's so dark. You can't see your own tail. And then all of a sudden, we saw a glowing blob floating towards us. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Ah, giant bioluminescent marine worm with fangs. Creepy! Bioluminescent means it glows. Yeah, obviously. Let's get out of here. And then another time, we hitched a ride with a shark. They can swim real fast. And they have big scary teeth. But they can't turn their heads, so they're like, guys, what's back there? I don't know, man. I don't see nothing. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also super cool. <laughs> the sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow. Cool. <laughs> we were playing with a sword. Well, I was. <laughs> Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands. And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... La 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 Hide! No! Let's get out of here! Out of where? Ah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 2, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Ah! Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing! Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, uh, see ya. Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah. I saw you on TV. You sang the oceanic anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, by the bronzer, the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. My voice? Yes. I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. We should really get going. Yes, I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Fun fact, dolphins have very good eyesight. It's true. And really good hearing. Yup. And they're nosy. Bottle nosy. Heard that too, and it wasn't very clever. Oh, well, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> he has a bottle nose, get it? Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major, just my 18th birthday. <laughs> we were having a huge party, and everyone was there. All my friends, and my sisters, and my mom and dad. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> there was a pinata. Tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out. And of course, we had a huge cake. <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince, a handsome one, 
not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I want to see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I want to be a human. Just for a little while. What would you do if you were there? Ahem. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, <laughs> I always forget that you're an air breather. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a person? Not up close. What do you want to see a human for? No reason. The Little Mermaid was so excited about her first trip to the surface of the ocean that she could barely sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed all night. Finally, she drifted off to sleep and dreamed of having human feet. Hello, fellow human people. Thank you for coming to my dance recital. <laughs> now watch me dance with my brand new feet. Wow, that is so cool. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, eyeball guy, yuck. But the prince was really handsome. <sighs> the next morning, the little mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look, a ship. The prince, it's him. The who, what? Let's go! When the Little Mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! There's gotta be a prince on that ship, I just know it! What prince? That prince. What a dream boat! It is a nice boat, I guess. No, he's the dream boat. <laughs> that means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Never in any of the hundreds of fairy tales that I've read have I ever heard of a human falling in love with a mermaid. Love? Already? Sheesh. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but he looks just like a storybook prince. Not at all like my sisters described. They said humans have horns and eight legs and a hundred eyes, but this human only has two perfectly perfect eyes. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? O-M-G whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Oh, wow. I wonder what his wish is gonna be. Maybe it's to meet a mermaid. <laughs> I wish that he would wish to meet a cool mermaid. Me, obviously. <laughs> and fall in love. And then like magic, I turn into a human with feet. <laughs> we could go on long walks on the beach or do a three-legged race or get matching patties, go shoe shopping, and of course, dance. We would probably be the best dancers in the whole world. Aw, that is so nice. Are you done? I'm getting hungry. We've been here forever. Hold your seahorses just a little longer. Dolph, they are dancing. <gasps> That's dancing? It looks like they got shocked by an electric eel. It's beautiful. Oh, look at all the colors. It's so pretty. <laughs> what is it? I think they're fireworks. I've, I've heard of them, but I never knew they were so cool. Look, that one looks like a smiley face. <laughs> cool. Wow, this is so fun. The two watched until the fireworks were over and all the people had gone down into the boat's cabin. Okay, show's over. Let's go home. Wait, look. 
Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Didn't he already make a wish on his birthday candles? Golf, be quiet! I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I get you! Someone who likes the things I like. Someone I can talk to. Someone down to earth who likes to take long walks and dance. I'm here! It's me! Be mine! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! I'll save you! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We have to save the prince. I'm on it. We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him. Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. Uh-oh, here comes a human. We have to go. But... No buts. Let's go. Well, goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you. I promise. That prince is so handsome. Sir, are you okay? Where is she? Where's my princess? You fell overboard. You must have hit your head. No, she was here. She saved me. Whatever you say, sir. Back at the sea palace, the little mermaid told her sisters all about her adventure with the prince. No way. I don't believe you. It's true, I saved him. Well, Dolph helped. <laughs> but he looked right into my eyes. And you know what? It's true, love. I just know it. Give it up. You're a mermaid. He's a human. Um, never gonna happen. Yeah, go to sleep. That's a good idea, because then I can dream of my prince all night. And she did. The little mermaid dreamt of her prince, but something was off. Ah. Oh no, that's not right. Sea witch. Oh no, no, I'm not a witch. 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 That's it. I'll go to the sea witch. She'll know how to give me human feet. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be a human. Really? How interesting. Is it? You know, when you were here last, I offered you a trade. You can have anything you wish for, and I'll have your voice. Can't you do some witch magic? Like, how about I just pay you, and then you turn me into a human, and then you can work up some other spell for a nice voice. So, um, not that your voice isn't already nice. Oh, I love your voice. Yeah, sure. Well, that was weird. And why do you want to be a human so badly? Well, there's this prince, and I saved him from drowning. Well, Dolph did, but that's besides the point. I think I love him. Oh, the prince, not Dolph. Oh, I love the prince. I don't know, whatever. I mean, it's complicated. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish. You'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. Not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. A sea urchin? And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Yeah, they're awful. They hide in the sand and stick you with their stingers. Yeah, terrible. Oh, and I will be needing that voice of yours. But how will I talk to the prince? He needs to hear how funny and charming I am. <laughs> he needs to hear me sing. Oh. And hear my laugh. <laughs> and hear my Dolph impression. Hey, I'm Dolph. I'm over here. Little Mermaid, let's swim. Oh. I guess that one's more of an inside joke, but the point is I need my voice. We can trade. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Trade? Who are you? I'm the girl who saved you. Ah, Sea Witch. Well, maybe it's more mysterious and enchanting with no voice at all. Very well. Let's with you. You'll be a human. But if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? 
to swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Ow, 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 owie, ow, ow, ow. Ugh, ugh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchins. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, first order of business, shoes. <laughs> I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. Ooh, that makes sense. You wanna buy these shoes? Those are a kid's size six. Let's find something in your size. Ooh, these are much better. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those. You know, with money? Do you have money? Then I'm afraid you'll have to go. I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. Can you not speak at all? You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. But Princess Lily, she looks like a common ragamuffin to me. You are very rude. And you are coming with me. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Oh, that is so nice. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince. <gasps> Princess Lily was so nice. She took me to get new clothes. And then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the sea palace, but this place was amazing. For example, they had this thing called an elevator. It's like magic. <laughs> You're on one floor, and then you go in this little box, press a bunch of buttons, and they light up, and then, presto, you appear on another floor. <laughs> After I got tired riding the elevator, the princess and I chilled out by the pool, where I tried to impress her with my water skills. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot harder without a tail. <laughs> that was so funny. Still, it was fun. Could it really be this easy? <laughs> First day as a human, I'm already best buds with the princess. <laughs> and it was only getting better because it was almost dinner time, and that meant I would meet the prince. I was so nervous. Surely the prince would recognize me and it would be love at first sight, or second sight, whatever. <laughs> but when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday too. Small world. Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. It's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. They're just pretend, Jeff. Where does your family live, dear? Mom, I told you, she can't talk. Can she write? Oh, I didn't think of that. Great idea. Uh-oh, what would I tell them? Obviously not the truth. They just said they don't believe in mermaids. I know. Well, what does it say? It's all just nonsensical gibberish, sir. She must have bumped her head and forgotten how to write. I'll call the doctor tomorrow. For now, 
Dinner is served. I guess she doesn't like fish. She might just be full. She ate a lot of ice cream earlier. Dear Prince Jeff, you're right. Mermaids are real. I know because I am one, and I'm the one who saved you. You may be wondering, why does she have feet if she's a mermaid? Well, I went to the sea witch who cast a spell on me, giving me feet so I could meet you. And that's also why I can't talk. See, she made me trade my voice for the feet. I don't really know why. Witches' curses are usually pretty weird. Anyway, I like you. Do you like me? Circle one. Yes, no, or maybe. Yours truly. a message from the sea witch. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Not a word, no cheating. That's all it said, but what could it mean? Oh no, did it mean I couldn't write to the prince either? No fair. This was gonna be harder than I thought. The next day, the doctor came in to check on me. Uh-huh. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Oh, right. So you can't say a word, huh? And you don't remember anything? This is clearly a case of head bump induced non rememberiness I recommend lots of rest and ice cream. Ooh, this is so exciting. And you'll stay with us until you're better. Your family must be worried sick. And they were worried. The Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? Well, she's been very interested in humans the last couple days. And? Um. Speak, Dolphin, speak. I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. But there's no way she could get onto land. Unless... La 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 Ziddy dee 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 Doo doo ba 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 Yes, who is it? Uh oh! Where's my daughter? Who? My daughter! Oh right, her! She's up there, with the humans. She thinks she's in love. <laughs> with a human? We made a deal and the spell's been cast. I can't interfere. Anyway, I'm busy recording my album. I'm calling it Witch's Brew. It's jazz. <laughs> that was hilarious. You have until tonight to bring her home or else. The Sea King was so angry that he threw the Sea Witch in jail. You're making a huge mistake. Then he sent a message to his daughter. Huh? This time it was from my dad, not the stinky Sea Witch with another rule. My dearest daughter, you must come home at once. You do not know the dangers of humans. I've sent my finest trained seal to escort you home. Love, Dad. I missed my dad, but I couldn't leave yet. Things were going really well on land. Plus, there's the whole curse thing. I tried to show the seal that I was safe and he could let my family know that I was doing just fine. <laughs> but I'm not sure he understood. So like I said, things were going really well with the prince and princess. They taught me all kinds of stuff about the human world. Of course, they thought they were just helping me remember. You know, because I fell off a ship and bumped my head. But the best thing I learned was how to dance. That is amazing. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun. Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. Hey, Jeff, maybe you can invite the mermaid to the ball. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball? Awesome, he likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're gonna dance at the ball. That's something. Jeff, you know that daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night? That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Little Mermaid was very upset. I mean, wouldn't you be if you thought you might turn into a sea urchin? You remember the deal with the sea witch. Well, let me remind you, flashback time. Let's review. 
you'll be a human. But if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. How was I supposed to know that Prince Jeff was already getting hitched? What am I gonna do? What would you do if you were there? While the Little Mermaid was busy thinking, her dad, the Sea King, was busy coming up with a plan for her rescue. I'll just swim up there, and no, that won't work. Can't swim on land. Nope. Okay, I'll send all the sea turtles and crabs up there and demand she come home. They can walk. She'll just refuse to come. Wait, I know. I'll send all the seagulls to fly into the palace and pick her up and carry her home. But didn't the sea witch say she has to stay or else she'll turn into a sea urchin? Right, the sea witch. I'll just make a new deal with the sea witch. No, never negotiate with witches. But off they went to make a deal with the evil sea witch. Back on land, the little mermaid had come up with a very good plan. Okay, this is such a good idea, you guys. I'll just act like a mermaid. Then the prince will totally recognize me. Then he'll want to marry me and not this princess Esmeralda. So obvious. OMG. I love it. The Little Mermaid was sure this plan would work, and soon she and Prince Jeff would be in true L-O-V-E. That spells love, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, I told you, the spell has been cast. Nothing I can do. What if you could have my palace? Say what now? You send me to land as a human. And if I can't get my daughter back, you win. You get my kingdom. Now that's interesting. Wait, your majesty, the mermaid really, really, really likes the prince. What if she doesn't want to come back with you? Well, you'll have to help me convince her. Me? Uh, and what happens to us if we fail? If you fail, you turn into a jellyfish, and I will have everything. And if we succeed? You won't. <laughs> that is so not cool. But if you do, I'll swim away to another ocean and never set a tentacle in your kingdom again. What's the catch? The catch is you can't tell her why you're there. The only choice is to make her fall out of love with the prince. Do we have a deal? Okay, let's review the pros and cons here. It's a deal. Oy vey. It's finally time for the royal ball. Okay, just act like a mermaid. But it turned out that acting like a mermaid was a lot harder than she expected. Apart from her doing swimming dance moves, she was at a total loss. Here ye, here ye, please make way for the lovely Princess Esmeralda. Whoa, we have legs, this is cool. I don't like it, these are feet. They're totally weird. They're not so bad. Look, I can jump. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay, okay, enough nonsense. Let's go find my daughter. Meanwhile, back at the ball, the Little Mermaid had gotten a chance to meet Esmeralda and... Guys, Princess Esmeralda was totally cool! She was funny and pretty and smart and totally a good dancer. She even did this really funny trick where she pretended to find a coin behind my ear. I'm telling you, she was the best. Surely Prince Jeff must be totally head over heels in love with her. But Jeff just stared out at sea, looking for his mermaid. That is so sad. Oh yeah, my plan. He just needs to see me in my natural habitat. Girl overboard! <laughs> All right, I forgot that swimming with human legs is kinda tricky. Help, help, she's drowning. I'll save her. I've got you. Not the romantic rescue I was expecting. When the two made it safely to shore, everyone cheered. Yeah! Yay, great job. You swim like a natural, like a dolphin. Thanks, I'm Princess Esmeralda. Who are you? Uh, I'm Prince uh, Dolphrey. Dolphrey? Yep, Prince Dolphrey. And this is my uncle, the king of Sea Town. Anyway, lovely to meet you, princess. Everyone was very happy to welcome the royal travelers. Everyone except for the little mermaid. That is totally Dolph and my dad. Who invited them? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. 
Wiggle, snap, story time. Dolphin the Sea King, I mean Prince Dolphery and the King of Sea Town had just arrived and everyone was very happy to welcome the new guests to the Royal Ball. The Little Mermaid, of course, was a little suspicious, right? I mean, why are they here to take me back to sea? I can't just leave. And how did they get feet? They must have made a deal with the Sea Witch. That can't be good. We're all doomed. How are they ever going to get out of this one? And look at Dolph, laughing it up with Esmeralda like they've known each other for years. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Ahem, Dolph, what happened to the rescue mission? I'm on it. I'll distract Esmeralda so the Little Mermaid can fall in love with the prince. Then the spell will be broken. But then she'll be a human forever, Dolph. Oh, right. We have to make her fall out of love. So the two of them hatched a plan to make the Little Mermaid fall out of love. They put marbles on the dance floor to make them look clumsy. But the Little Mermaid just thought it was a cool new dance and joined in. They released helium out of party balloons to make his voice all squeaky. Would you like a glass of punch? Whoa, what's up with my voice? But the Little Mermaid thought the prince was just being so hilarious. I thought that would work. Me too. <laughs> that was so funny. The Sea King and Dolph even shaved a skunk stripe in his hair when he wasn't looking. Huh? But the Little Mermaid didn't think it was a weird haircut or anything. She thought he looked really cool. I don't get it. No matter what we do, she just likes him more. Ugh, who could like a human? I don't know, they're not so bad. Like, take Esmeralda. She's pretty cool. Not you, too. What? I just think she's neat. Actually, I'm gonna go see what she's up to right now. Dolph! I don't know, she might need some punch or something. The Sea King didn't know what to do. His plan was failing. His daughter had a mega crush on a human and it seems like there was nothing he could do to change her mind. Pretty soon, the Sea Witch would win and gain control of his entire Sea Kingdom. He and Dolph would be useless jellyfish and the Little Mermaid would be a sea urchin. Suddenly, the Sea King had an idea. Of course! Why didn't I think of this before? I'll just tell everyone that my daughter's a mermaid. The royal family would never let their son marry a mermaid. Excuse me, I have an announcement. Oh no. I just wanted to say it's so refreshing to see how nice you are to this mermaid. Mermaid? Mermaid? Who's a mermaid? Where? Right there. You're a mermaid? My mermaid, you saved me. Aw, that's so sweet. He's obviously joking, Jeffrey. Yeah, don't be silly. Of course it's a joke. I knew that. <laughs> no, it's true. She's a mermaid, and the sea witch gave her feet. The sea witch? This guy's hilarious. I mean... Right? Who ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh, no. What's going on? Uh, long story. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The sea witch had just crashed the party and um, it was awkward. So, um, anyone know any good jokes? I know one. How did the sea urchin cross the road? Uh, how? It didn't. I don't get it. It's an inside joke. Oh, now I get it. Time's almost up, by the way. Uh-oh, I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast. If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever. What's the matter, dear? Cheer up, it's a party, right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second, your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. But you're not a mermaid. No, sweetie, I'm not, but... You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Excellent, let's all just forget about all that silly nonsense about mermaids and sea witches, okay? Okay. Great, all right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no, everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. What, no. That can't be. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. I guess this spell only worked on real humans. I don't even know how evil magic works. 
Okay, quick rundown on why this is very, very bad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the mermaid turns into a voiceless sea urchin. And we turn into jellyfish, I think. All these curses and spells are starting to get confusing. Then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world. We gotta stop this. Yeah. And now the part where we come up with a plan. Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part one. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. And that meant he could summon an army of the toughest sea creatures to help us. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> uh, what's up, your majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. It's time to battle. Ooh, this is so exciting. While the Sea King explained the situation to the shark, Dolph began his part of the plan, which brings us to Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part two. E -e 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 hey guys, Dolph, is that you? What happened to your tail? Uh, that's not important, but listen up. I need your help. Dolph explained everything to his dolphin brethren while I went to work on my part of the plan, stall for time. The sea witch had put everyone to work while she was just lounging around in a deck chair, sipping on a pineapple drink and barking orders. I don't want crab, I want lobster. You call these flowers, try again. More shiny thingies, more ruffly stuff, more everything. Jeez, what a bridezilla. That is so not cool. We're almost finished with this dress. Oh no, we have to start all over. Oops. Wedding today, 3 p.m. <laughs> now to find Prince Jeff. I'm so excited to marry my true love. Poor guy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hey, let me out. I have to get married to my lovely bride. Ugh. Okay, I hope Dolph and my dad are ready. What do you think you're doing, you urchin? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I've decided I can't wait to marry the prince. He's just so dreamy. Out of my way, shrimp. Wow, that is so mean. She looks mad. My darling, let's go get married. Okay, my love. Things are getting a little too real. Where's Dolph and my dad? E -e 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 -e. They're here! Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today, whoa, to join this, whoa! Skip to the end. Do you? Wait, what's your name? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Do you? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Take this man, Prince Jeff, to be. I do. Prince Jeff, do you? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't worry, we got this. You, you're doing this. I was gonna play fair, but I changed my mind. Ah, watch out! You'll have to go through me first. No problem. Mmm, ah! <laughs> tastes like chicken. Ah, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. Uh-oh. What's going on? Really long story. Hey, talking dolphin. Uh, I should go. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Very cool. Jeff, are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. Oh, so cute. Six months later. So everything was working out great. The sea witch was defeated and her spells were broken. 
I didn't turn into a gross sea urchin, and my dad and Dolph weren't turned into jellyfish. Yay! <laughs> Esmeralda admitted she didn't want to get married anyway. Convenient. <laughs> and Prince Jeff finally found his mermaid. Moi. <laughs> and best of all, after lots of begging and explaining, my dad and Prince Jeff's parents agreed that it would be okay if he and I went on a real date. So far, so good. And by the way, um, milkshakes are delicious. <laughs> hey, wanna hear me sing? Of course. <laughs> Aw, happily ever after. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye.